What is up everybody, Scape211 here, and we are doing another best loadouts video. This time we're gonna focus on Juggernaut. He is our traditional tank and one of the highest HP guys in the game. Um, so he's a good one that we also get early. So he has an early, mid, and late game. So let's get into that. And we're gonna start with the early game. When you first get Juggernaut, he is a measly six energy. Because he is one star, he starts out pretty low and you gotta work your way up. And at this stage, the best weapon you have is the RPGs, and I like to use a single RPG-6 here. Why a single RPG-6? Well, the RPG family is pretty low, and RPG-6 is probably the only one worth investing, in my opinion, that's going to carry with you later in the game. However, because this is early game, if you are putting your RPG-6 on someone else like Panther, you can certainly put on an RPG-4 and an RPG-2 and do well here. It's so early in the game, it's fine if those aren't leveled up too much. Heck, you could probably even put on a uh, Auto Cannon 4 and an Auto Cannon 2. But uh, the 6 is just the best option, I think, and will probably be your most powerful at this point. Now there aren't really a whole lot of great other builds this early in the game, so we're going to move on to 8 energy. At 8 energy, we're going to stick with the RPGs mostly, and in this case we're still going to rock that RPG 6, but also add the RPG 2, just because we have the 2 extra energy. And of course, again, you can use dual RPG 4s if that works better for you, because this is still pretty early. But again, I'm just choosing this because for me, this was the strongest thing at the time, and I'm guessing it'll probably be the strongest for most people as well. Now, if you want a more long range build at eight energy, you could run a single long arm eight. This is a really damaging build just because this is probably the only two star weapon you have at this time. And the long arm eights are a great weapon and Juggernaut is pretty good for it. With his shield, he can take a pretty good beating and it'll give you time to be able to calmly line up your shots. Remember, this is a manually aiming weapon, so you're going to have to put in a little bit of time. But this early in the game, when you have a Juggernaut who is beefy and the long arm is going to do great damage, this is a great time to get used to the manual aspect aiming of the game. Long arms should carry with you throughout the game and get you prepared for an end game weapon like the Railgun. So this is definitely a great time to start with it and just get comfortable with that weapon. It's a solid build. So now let's move over to mid game. In mid game you will have 12 energy to start with so we're going to put on dual RPG 6s. Now of course you've been running RPGs before on Juggernaut and probably other bots as well so this should be pretty comfortable space. Not much that needs to be said here, this is just a build that's going to be more damaging than the previous and uh, it's just a common build people run at this point for Juggernaut. So let's move on to the next build. Now a less common build on Juggernaut would be the dual Javelin Rack 6. Not because it's bad on Juggernaut, but because you usually use this on other bots, especially lighter bots. Uh, the most common I would see are Panther and Killshot around this time. Why them? Well, because they're better at doing more hit and run style attacks and they need less exposure because they have less health. However, once you start upgrading those and you're not using the Javelin Racks on them, Juggernaut can be a great use for those uh, weapons just because he will do well with them and uh, you know he'll be able to take a beating from your opponents as well. What's difficult in using this on him is that he is much slower than the other botch that I mentioned. So you do want to be careful in positioning yourself as well as when you're in CPC. You want to be aware of what your team score is because breaking out Juggernaut in this build, he can be a bit slow. So just be wary of that, especially in those CPC battles. Now another less common build, it would be this long range build of a long arm 10 and a thermal lance 2. It's not that we haven't seen other long range builds on Juggernaut, but when you're using something at 12 energy with either the uh, long arm 8 or the long arm 10, you only have 2 or 4 energy for your side arm. So it, there's not really great options to put on it there. Some people like to do like an RPG um, or a shotgun, but both of those singularly don't have enough punch for me and I prefer going into the full long range build um, just to let that thermal lance help me a little bit for damage as well as doing the overheat before I hit everybody with the long arm shot. So this is what works best for me, but you can certainly Certainly experiment with this kind of long range build at this point in the 12 energy bracket. But now we are going to move over to the 16 energy bracket. And to start with, we're going to do probably one of the most commonly seen builds for Juggernaut at this, and this would be the dual missile rack 8. 
Not, not a whole lot of players play this, not because it's not good, but because they use their Mr. Rack 8s on other stuff. But you see the AI use this a lot. And it's actually still pretty good even for players as well. It's just less common. Largely because this is, in my opinion, more of a hit and run style build. You do a lot of damage and then you get behind cover. Juggernaut is more the guy with the big tanky body so he can get in there and mix it up. So he doesn't necessarily need to do hit and run attacks, but because he has his shield, he can shield up get in the battle, do some damage, and then pull back if he needs to and do that pretty effectively. So he can even do this pretty well if you need him to and if you are running other kind of builds on other mechs and you have the missile racks available. Still pretty strong on him as well. Now next up we have the sustain builds and this one works really well for Juggernaut. One of my favorites to do is the dual pulse cannon 8. You can also do dual carbine 8 but it really depends on what you have access to. A lot of people at this point in the game if you're free to play or if you haven't spent much then you may not have the carbine 8s. If you do they will probably be more damaging since they'll be at 5 star right out of the gate. But um, the pulse cannons also are no slouches uh, damage and they can do really really well. Both are great. Personally, I like the Pulse Cannon 8s on Juggernaut, especially because in that 60 meters range where it does optimal damage is a great place for Juggernaut to be in most of the time. He's big, he's threatening, so getting in close is what he does great. So this is a perfect type of weapon to use for him, and if you continue to upgrade it, it will still be a solid build for him even later on in the game. Back to long range builds, we have the Dual Long Arm 8. Again, this is going to feel very similar to the other long arm builds that you've done before. But it's just going to be more damaging and be completely long arm based instead of having a sidearm. So this should be a nice solid option for Juggernaut in the long range game. Now let's move on to late game. In the end game, Juggernaut has 18 energy and he has a lot of different options that he can run pretty effectively. First up, he has the sustain build. And here, this is usually the uh, Carbine 8 and Carbine 10 build or what I like to do personally is the Pulse Cannon 8 and the Carbine 10. Now both are really similar um, and you get a little bit more range with the dual carbine type of build but what I like about this build is that because both of these weapons unload their clips at different times and reload at different times you basically are able to keep sustained fire on your enemy uh, almost continually. You probably have about a second and a half to two seconds in between when one of these is reloading before the other one is done um, where you don't have continuous fire on your opponent but Overall, it's pretty nice for keeping your opponents at bay and taking them down pretty effectively. Now, going back into long range once again, at this point, we are going to be doing the height of the long range for Juggernaut, and that would typically be the long arm 8 and the long arm 10. Now, of course, there are other variations you could do, but this has been one of the ones that's the most effective at just a straight long range build and is very similar to what you've already done previously, so it should be comfortable space if you've been using the long arm. Next up, we got a more flexible build. This would be the Stasis Beam 12 and the Missile Rack 6. Now, this is like the younger cousin to the Guardian build that I did previously with the Stasis Beam 16 and the Missile Rack 8. It's just not quite as damaging, and you also want to be careful of how you use it, especially with the Missile Rack 6. I find that uh, if I'm 50 meters or closer, these land pretty well, but if I get further and my target is a faster, smaller bot, it can be difficult to hit those missiles with. So you want to be careful of that. But generally, this is a more flexible build that lets you be pretty effective up to about 100 meters. You just want to be careful of when you use your missile racks and on what type of targets. The more you play with it, though, the more comfortable you get at when you can use that. Another good flexible build for Juggernaut at 18 energy is a Carbine 12 and a Missile Rack 6. Now range wise, this is going to feel very similar to the previous one we just mentioned, but because we're swapping in the Carbine 12 instead of the Stasis Beam, we're going to have to be a little bit better with our aim, but we're also going to be more damaging. And yeah, this is probably a little bit less budget friendly as well because we're using the Carbine 12, but it is a solid end game weapon and we're talking end game juggernaut. So if you're able to get this weapon, this is a great build to put on him. It can be very fearsome up close just because you're putting in a lot of damage at 50 meters or less. And if you get even closer and get an optimal range with your carbines, it can be even more deadly. So that's usually where you want to be. But then, of course, if you get beyond 50 meters and in that less than 100 meters range, the carbine 12 can put in good work. Work there. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid build for Juggernaut. You know, I really like using it. The only time I don't use this is when I want to use Carbine 12s on somebody else because it's such a good weapon, it's hard to pick the right mech to put it on. But Juggernaut is a great option for it. 
Here is one more flexible build that you can use for Juggernaut, and this is the Long Arm 10 and the Missile Rack 8. This is really nice for being long range and up close, and it's got some pretty decent punch on both ends of the spectrum. Now, it does sacrifice a little bit on both ends because you're splitting up your weapon usage in most cases because you're going to be shooting far away with just the Long Arm and then shooting up close with just the Missile Racks, but that still means that both of these are pretty solid options and gives you a great range of coverage, and because, like we said, it's on Juggernaut, he's a big beefy bot, he can withstand a little bit of damage in either category and probably come out on top in most encounters. That is going to do it for this video, you guys. I hope you found that helpful with Juggernaut. And uh, if you have certain builds that you like for him or others that uh, you feel should have been mentioned, feel free to comment below. But otherwise, we will see you out there on the battlefield.